Hey, what's up guys, Sir Eminon here, back with another episode of Road to 1000 Doing Book Rating. Uh, this time I'm back on Lunoi Time Thief, and we're going to actually be playing another mirror match. So a lot of you guys weren't quite happy with the first one, um, which is, I guess, again, understandable because it wasn't highly competitive, but I think that one did a good job of showcasing mistakes, uh, misplays, and just uh, generally what to do in suboptimal situations. But in this gameplay, it's a lot more interactive and I feel it gives a much better display of actual you know, mirror match interactions. So yeah, without further ado, let's just go ahead and get started. So I believe I win the die roll, obviously because I'm electing to go first. And uh, this guy's actually a viewer of my channel, so uh, shout outs to you, Pikachu15. Um, but yeah, he's maining uh, the Magician Souls package, which I did an entire video on. If you guys haven't seen it, go check that out. Um, and he is also playing Mystic Mind in the main deck, which is a, a pretty interesting uh, meta call. Uh, I guess like the argument for it is that um, it's like an immediate bait for Trigate. Although like if you don't have other cards to combo with it, it's kind of a little bit awkward. Um, alternatively, like you could put it on the board after you like force uh, Sleeper Trigate if uh, if that's possible, and then um, just hope that they don't have an outs to it. Um, but uh, yeah, we're going first here, and it doesn't have any interactions, so we basically just get to do our entire combo unhindered. This is the uh, Chick Tiger plus Extender combo. So I'm actually just gonna fast forward this because um, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, getting Zephyrus before using the Danger, obviously to have a higher chance of the Jackalope summoning itself. Um, and with the added benefit of possibly getting Zephyrus in Grave. Um, so yeah, he hits Call By, but we draw another one anyway, so it's like totally okay. Uh, we're still gonna go the Curious Slime uh, just so that we can get to the uh, the perfume and stuff. A lot of people like to hand trap the four tricks, which is also like a thing that I've noticed um, is that people like use their imperimer ash or whatever on the four tricks instead of waiting for curious. Um, but actually, like if you wait for curious, then it's a lot more of a hindrance because then I can't get the Zephyrus engrave and I have to commit the Martin to like make a play um, for the curious to begin with. So that's just something to keep in mind if you are playing against this deck, is that like, Curious is a bigger choke point, like if this is the play that they're relying on actively. Like if they want to like use Zephyrus um, and things of that nature. But um, also, like, there is another line where you just go for like the um, the Lambda play, and then like you could just like end on Redo or plus uh, Lambda, and like just be more conservative with the uh, Zephyrus. So that's also okay. Um, but yeah, in this case like, he doesn't have any hand traps anyway, so it's kind of a, a moot point. So yeah, uh, we're gonna go into Lambda here because we have the Gamma in hand already. So like, if he has Nibiru, then uh, we are pretty safe from it. Um, yeah, Redo is gonna come down, and we are able to search Lambda or Gamma in the end phase off of Lambda. So uh, yeah, pretty good stuff. And uh, we also get to have a Perpetua here as well as the Redoers. So this is basically like the uh, standard, I guess, three interactions, four with the Call by the Grave. Uh, so you have the the flyback coming underneath the Redoer, flyback's Grave effect, and then Gamma as well. And obviously Call by the Grave. So uh, interestingly, my opponent doesn't ever actually activate the Mystic Mine on this turn, and I kind of wonder why that is. So um, he's gonna start off with a uh, Foolish Goods for a Perfume. And um, obviously, like I don't really have a response to this like at the present moment. Um, yeah, Nessie is going to go ahead and search Jackal. I don't feel like using Call By on it. I'd rather save Call By for something more impactful, like either Zephyrus or Martin. Ideally, um, Martin's kind of a weird case because it kind of hinders your own follow up. But uh, if you can't throw Zephyrus, and that's like really really good, um, like if you just preemptively hit it, uh, because like typically you're going to use Zephyrus on your own turn. So, uh, like, you don't need it after that, obviously. So, like, if you have Call by the Grave, like, that's typically what I try and save it for, and then Martin's, like, target number two. Like, danger is, like, I would only ever really hit a danger with Call by the Grave if I had, like, multiple call buys, or if I had, um, if I had just, like, other ways to actually stop, like, the Lunalite engine, but, like, the dangers are obviously not as, like, critical. Um, so, yeah, I do decide to, uh, wait for the souls to actually pitch, the retrograde for cost um, because like at this point I feel like he's um, fishing for like specific cards to be able to like get access to his uh, to his Lunalite stuff 
So I think this is like a fine time to gamma because again, like if he tries to commit heavy to the Lunoid portion of the engine, I already have Call by the Grave and I have like the Redoer to spin Tiger anyway. So I felt like it was fine because like I would have enough greater disruption to where I think the gamma on the Magician Souls was worth it. Um, but yeah, like clearly this danger is going to try and find him something like very valuable. Um, and just right off the bat, I'm going to use Call by the Grave on the uh, Zephyrus just to get out of the way. Um, because like even at this point, if he uh, if he has like a way to like for one right now he doesn't have a way to get into Tiger, but like even if he drew the Tiger again, I had Redoer anyway. Um, so what's interesting here is that he doesn't try and use Mystic Mind to, like force the Redoer because like Redoer would obviously be the answer to Mystic Mind, uh, and I guess like he was trying to um, to get me to use Redoer at an earlier point so that then he could just Mystic Mind with me having no response, but. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna hold Redoer like as long as I can because like that's the strongest interaction. And here he goes for his own Redoer, and I actually see his plan. So he's going to go into battle phase to uh, attack my own Redoer. Um, I think his intention was to try and like bait me into using Redoer to try and like spin his, and then he'll just chain his own, detaching this Martin, getting Serena Dance, and getting Tiger. Um, and then I don't have any real disruptions after that. So um, I think that was like his goal, but um, I just let my Redoer die um, because like they just didn't get any value after that. And, like even if he flipped his Mystic Mind at that point, uh, I could just consolidate everything and then like link it to Phoenix. Um, so yeah, I, I think I, I think he could have like maybe played his sequencing a little bit different, like with the Mystic, given the fact that they have Mystic Mind in his hand. But um, yeah, overall like I was very very well positioned in that game. So. Yeah, in this game two here, um, we have Gamma plus Evenly, but like the rest of our hand is kind of shaky. So yeah, we're, we're just gonna wait uh, to Gamma him, like ideally at a critical point. Um, but alternatively, like we could just let his entire player resolve and then just uh, you know, just use uh, just use Evenly. So yeah, I don't feel like using Gamma on the on the Martin, like. I guess there's an argument to be made there, but um, I, I didn't think it was correct because, um, especially because he had the the good to follow up anyway. So like he had a Zephyrus engrave and like another tiger. It was like it wouldn't have been the right point to to gamma. And that now at this point, I have to consider like if he's making lambda, like there is a possibility that he has hard drawn gamma. So um, him gammaing my gamma would uh, not be great like on his turn. It'll come up later, but um, I'll get to that. You know when it actually happens <laughs> but uh yeah he's gonna continue with his plays here with uh using zephyrus to bounce tiger and uh he's gonna go for redoer um he's gonna use martin to bring back the martin something that's interesting here actually is that like if you do play bezel ship you can scale tiger and then uh bring back another monster and then have perpetua and redoer on the board at the same time then Perpetua can attach Bezel Ship to the Redoer, and then Redoer gets back a monster, and then Bezel Ship can summon itself. So you get an extra rank four that way, whereas this way you end up with one monster short. Um, but that's if you're playing Bezel Ship. Uh, but he's going to make Dweller instead of the uh, Perpetua, which is pretty smart because uh, Dweller is a lot more of a hindrance in this matchup. Um, and he's just going to conserve his Tiger. Uh, I think he should have. Um, he should have brought back Collider Chick instead of the Martin so that he could uh, Tiger bring back the uh, the Martin to get Serenade Dance. But uh, I guess maybe if he is playing around this evenly that I have, then uh, that's also another thing to consider. Is like not over committing to evenly. But uh, yeah, he's gonna like steal my Tanky, which is unfortunate, but it is a it's part of the effect. So, anyways, I don't know what I was saying there. Uh, but yeah, uh, he's going to Chain Dweller and redo it in response to my Evenly, which is pretty expected. Um, and I'm going to try and uh, Gamma the Dweller, but he has his own Gamma, which obviously we knew he had, but um, it's just to, to force it out right now. Because like, if if by like some small chance uh, he let it go, then like that would be the ideal scenario. Like, it was to not have to play a new Dweller, but right now we're just kind of hoping that we have something you know good happen because uh right now like everything's turned off we have a very good hand but uh everything's turned off so yeah so the play here is to just try and make a dweller uh to stop his own follow-up so he can't kill me 
And then ideally on my next turn, I can just uh, use this perfume to get Tiger and get the ball rolling. Because I haven't used any of my resources. So I'm playing basically from a turn behind this entire time. But if I can establish a sort of one turn buffer with a delay with using this dweller, then it'll be it'll be beneficial for me. That's like kind of my line of thinking. Yeah, we obviously know he has a second tiger because he searched it off the perfume and grave last turn. Because he opened with a tiger prior to that. Uh, and he drew the Apprentice Illusion Magician, which is uh, good because he can just pitch this Gamma since it's dead because the driver got banished off the evenly. So uh, you know, I guess that's a benefit there of drawing the magician or Apprentice Illusion Magician. Um, it's kind of just there as a beater at this point. but Yeah, he is going to just uh, smack me for a bunch of damage and go for an IP into a Baguska play. So uh, this would normally be pretty problematic because um, like IP would just be able to spin my Tiger as soon as I put it on the board. And Baguska would like stop any other things uh, like if I drew like meaningful monsters. But luckily I sacked my way into Dark Ruler no more, which is again pretty lucky, but uh, you know. It, I've cited it in specifically for this type of scenario. Like, even if they make a dweller, if they have like the the gamma, or sorry, the lambda plus the like the redo is set up, then like you can reasonably play through a fair portion of the board depending on your hand, even like through dweller. But uh, yeah, we're basically just able to get everything going at this point, and uh, we're gonna fast forward here a little bit. Yeah, so. We're gonna go ahead and use uh, four strix because we haven't um, we haven't used it yet, uh, and we haven't uh, normal summons. So yeah, we just go ahead and do that. Um, yeah, we beat over his monsters, and I don't think I used M no, I did use Martin uh, to to go into the four strix to begin with, but I haven't used Zephyrus yet. So yeah, we're gonna make Perpetua. And yeah, I, I do the play that I mentioned before, which is like just get Serenade out of my deck. Uh, which again, you could argue is a little bit greedy, but um, at this point, like the resource game is like kind of uh, dwindling a bit. So like it, it's a lot more simplified. We kind of know like what each other, like what each other has, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, uh, we grab a perfume, which I mean, is actually not that bad for me. Like normally, like that'd be not a great hit because it gives him setup, but he already has two tigers and he already has a perfume, so like, you know, he really can't search that many more tigers, to be honest. Uh, so yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and continue up here. Um, yeah, I decide to um, to gamma his uh, yellow martin. Oh, whoops, I went a bit too fast there. But uh, yeah, I decided to gamma his yellow martin engrave and um, I use Perpetua to uh, attach the flyback to the redoer so that I can use it on the other tiger. Um, and I don't remember what he had in his hand, but uh, like generally speaking, like I had too much of a fault. I, I had too much disruption for him and he couldn't like crack this board. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of just how that game ended. But uh, the Dark Ruin No More was definitely a, a bit of a lucky top deck, but I mean, you cited, you cited those cards in for a reason. And yeah, like the deck, like if you don't naturally draw Winder or uh, Retrograde or any like other out, then uh, it actually does have a hard time against Dark Ruler. And again, even like with Dweller, like if you if you Dark Ruler them, you can still play like reasonably well. Like you can set up enough of your board to where it's uh, pretty beneficial, especially if you play like a higher danger count. But um, yeah, that's actually going to do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like as well as any thoughts or feedback in the comment section down below. Uh, feel free to subscribe for more informative and competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! content. If you want to, you can follow me on Discord, Twitter, or Twitch. All three links in the description as always. And once again, thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, I'll catch you in the next video. See you guys.